So I did a recording on a reading I just did today. Well, you might get this in a different date, but I just love how random things have been released recently to the point where it's like, just everything's random. Everything's fucking random. <laughs> but I did a recording on a reading and it went over mm, roughly, probably close to three hours, which is, yeah, actually three hours. But what happened was there was a glitch here about two-thirds of the way. So I couldn't record the rest because I did record it. I closed it and I re-recorded it. But what happened was I lost the file because I accidentally deleted it. And it's just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> In any case, the message was straight through the whole thing. And I even did a card reading after that, which actually tied in with everything. I did a reading on my, on this one on these cards that I'm using. Um, I really need to either slow down or get a lot of space because I feel like everything that's been man-made and I'm just really complaining here that it's just... Um, <laughs> I'm hitting myself all the time, accidents, and I'm nervous and uh, lots of mistakes happen because... you really get tired of the unconsciousness of humanity or what we've been going through. Rushing, rushing. Pisses me off, really. <laughs> but anyways, it's gone. The file is gone. I tried to retrieve it. So, but here's what came out. Um, I hope... Whatever. Anyways, I've um, been in kind of very different mood lately. Um, part of me was definitely expecting a full three hour recording, but at least I got most of it. So, but to the person I was helping, um, Horst, I apologize, I didn't get to the last part, but you, got, you read the cards. I mean, you got the cards that I read. Uh, what was they, were they actually, I'm going to take them out, I still didn't, the card said, um, the last three cards were here actually, I didn't shuffle them, the first one was grace, okay, the other one was peace, and the third one was healer. So with these cards showing me the uh, things that he's been working on, or of course you hear this, right, that you've been working on with the first card with Grace, it's uh, taking it easy with yourself, right? Um, again, the recording isn't going to be here, so I apologize. We can do another one next time. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Everything's eternal, right? It's just, it's the ego that wants to keep things and control things. <laughs> it actually ties in with your third card. But the second card was healer, so that means trying to go back to that. So healer, basically. And the third card was the peace. So really, really relinquishing control, which ties in with what we read from your whole chart. We can always go back to that, which you know, it's going to give us more insight when we go back to things. And that's okay. And that's part of the whole eternal process because it's like fun. But anyways, I'm going to load this video with this one and it's not going to be an ending for the whole thing. But here it goes. So why don't we get started? I'm going to, I have the piles ready. I have my cheat sheet, actually. I have this, like, I don't memorize anything in astrology. It's just weird. I don't, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. So some astrologers will be like, they'll remember many things. I remember many things, but that's, you know. But anyways, so. I'm going to open your chart. The one that I sent you, I think I gave you a copy, correct? Yes, but I cannot read it. I don't have any idea. Yeah, just, <laughs> just in case. 
it's just in case. Okay. So here's the file. It's going to load a bit here. Just one second. Yep, I can see. <laughs> no, uh, I just had in this uh, full time purpose contact to a guy who made a kind of astrology, but he draw pictures out of it. Like a sheep or main uh, topics in my life. Okay. It was, but not like this. Okay. So, not a problem. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Cool. Well, so how it usually starts is I'll try to keep it simple. I don't want to shock you or anything, but <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm you. So usually what we start with is the general outlook of like the chart. Yes. I can see here that there's a lot of focus on what we call the, what is this, uh, sometimes I get mixed up, the Western. This is the Western side of the chart, not the opposite, it's not East, it's West. And there's a lot of your, a lot of the planets are in the top, sort of slide down here at the bottom here. The public or service but at the same time like relationships so to you relationships are important that's kind of like your general the general feel of your path that you're in okay okay so the path that you're in meaning like basically what you chose what's your soul contract so to speak so right um that's the general thing. Now, the other thing is that uh, I usually go at the bottom here. Oops, that's not the chart we want. <laughs> um, I see a lot of water. For me, this is that you're emotionally in touch with yourself. Right? Yeah. A lot of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, that's just the general that's the end of the that's another layer of the whole thing we're gonna go deeper right there's a lot of water in your chart there's a lot of water in your journey as this in this form there's also a lot of quite a bit of fire in there okay that means you have in, you have initiative to some degree you have um inspiration you have intuition okay it's very it's quite strong there so oh See, something happened there. I did not do that. Something happened. There's something, the technology, it's been being, being funny this year. <laughs> so, um, there's also, I see here, this earth right here. So what that means is that you, very little earth, so that means you tend to kind of, see, I did not do that. So you tend to want to well, I guess you can see that your journey is to finding more practicality in life. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, I don't. I, I don't think I get the point to get uh, more pra uh, to do more work practical with with the hand or like practice, like, not practice, like practical things. You kind of are learning to be more practical. It's uh, not really learning, but it's one of your weakest strength. It's something that you need to add to your life more. Earth is Earth is very practical. Earth is the element of being practical. It's the element of the material world, the physical world. Okay, okay. that's just a general thing as well. Again, we're adding layers as we're going down. We're going to go not layers on top, but layers going down. Okay, so this is how yeah, okay. It. okay. Um so now we go into the actual details of your chart. Usually we start with what's called the ascendant. Your ascendant, I think you've heard this before, the ascendant, right? Or your rising sign. <laughs> uh, it's in Aquarius. Typically it's what you present to the world. It's how you package yourself. And it's very airy, it's very, there's unpredictability with it. It's very, it's all about communication, but also kind of like sometimes distancing. 
very scientific as well, very innovative. Uh, you like groups, you prefer communities and groups. You, know? you like a direct ascendant is linked to the world, but it's also the body, general body, how we look, our general perception of life. Okay, so you embody this Aquarian energy, right? It's like, ah, oh, okay, it's, it, right? So, yeah. And you probably um, might appear for some people, they might think you're like, you have a sort of electricity about you. When they see you, they see kind of like this sort of, maybe you have, um, I don't know, this is a unique appearance. Right? That's usually the appearance of Aquarius. Now remember that when we read the birth chart, this is called a birth chart or natal chart. Natal means birth, right? Latin. <laughs> so when you're birth that you're in, however, of course, we know this, we progress, we change we, over time. But there's going to be a layers, those changes are going to be layers. It's like a lake. If you see a lake and you throw a rock or a pebble in a lake, that lake will naturally change a little bit because of that one pebble. And that's just like that. But it was the same lake that all, all that all that time. You know, see what I mean? It's kind of like that. That's the analogy I'm giving you. Um, the other thing about the ascendant is that this is what we grow. It's one of the first things we learn in how we want to present ourselves, right? But as we get older, we start to develop this ego, right? You know this. Ego starts to develop. We have a personality. We have like, oh, this is who I am. Da, 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 da. So what happens is that one thing we don't realize as children is that as we get older, we come from environments or a family, or a sort of an upbringing that's found in the descendant. Now, when it comes to your descendant, it's in the sign of Leo. So what that means is that your overall upbringing was typically uh, very emotional. There's a lot of emotions, a lot of like ego, a lot of like, I think everyone was just very to themselves, everyone was uh, concerned about their own well-being. But there was also a lot of creativity, right? There was a lot of creativity. But how this how this relates with the ascendant, see, you have the polarity here, right? So you have the ascendant, descendant, polarity, right? This polarity means that it's really the shadow. It's the starting of the shadow. Are you familiar with that term? Yeah. Okay. So the shadow is what we don't want to be, right? So what happens is that as we get older, we come from a family that wants us to be possibly artistic or musical, uh, very like dramatic. There's also there's lots of drama, right? Me, me, me. Look at me. Kind of. That was you know. That's that's what that's what I'm seeing here. Okay. This is that this is the time of birth you gave me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's okay. The time of birth, I'm sure that was right, right? Right there, okay? Yep. Okay. 8.42 p.m. Yeah, 8.42 p.m. Yes? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making sure it's right. Because sometimes I go into the chart and like, what? It's the wrong birth time. <laughs> so anyways, so with this, um, oh, what's happening here? It's so weird. Okay, anyways. So very drama, there's a lot of drama in the family. That's another thing that's a little bit general, right? We'll go more specific again later. Um, so what that means for you is that you're subconsciously, what happens is that as you get older, there's a resistance toward that. The resistance towards being dramatic, being selfish, being uh, emotional, being too maybe, I don't know, too childish, childish and childlike. Maybe there was a resistance toward that, right? As you get older, you probably 
So I don't want that. So that is why this is why you want you 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 started learning that it's like oh I need to in order to survive that um, I needed to do what they're doing I need to do what my family is doing be dramatic and all that stuff but there because there was a resistance towards it what's happening is that you tend to attract people who are like that as well you attract people who are dramatic maybe selfish uh, childlike childish Maybe they're too artistic. Maybe musicians. You attract musicians. You attract people who are very Leo. You know, could be self-centered as well. Maybe, but that's not what you want. What you tend to do is like, no, this is what I want. I want to be more scientific. I want to be grounded. I want to be a little bit more, uh, uh, more people-oriented. I don't want to be the selfish person. I want to be selfless. I want to give. I want to do this. I want to contribute. Uh, I want to help the world. Does this resonate with you? So far, it's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a, a lot of things because this, uh, yes, yeah, the topic for this kind of uh, go out and share and help and be polite and not too selfish. And when I was younger, I think about to get on stage and become uh, an actor, but I don't do this. Uh, <laughs> I, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's cool. So, okay. So, that's the general thing, right? This is a lot to do with the shadow. The same thing that happens when we're talking about your, what this is called, your nadir. It's your inner self. Um, this is more about the family. So you probably grew up in a family environment where uh, there was a lot of probably like talking. Everybody was just like, blah, 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 blah. Everybody just always communicated. There's a lot of curiosity, which is okay. But there wasn't a lot of, um, what do you call this? Like connection. It was a little cold. It was a little too practical maybe or maybe a little too i'm talking about just your family the environment in your your home your family it's in gemini so that means it was very probably there was there was a lot of it wasn't there wasn't a lot of stability there wasn't a lot of like mm, it was just going this way there was a lot of you were it was everywhere right a lot of inconsistency so what that reflects into your your inner shadow which Every time you have like lines, you, it's, you don't really need to know this, but every time you have like these lines, it's the same exact opposite sign. It's in. Okay. So I don't know if you know this, but so these are signs, right? So sign, sign, sign. <laughs> okay, you know this a little bit in astrology. Uh, I know the signs, and and I get some of the pictograms, but not all. Okay. I know cancer and yeah. Aha. Krebs. But not Krebs or the, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, die Zwillinge. Oder yeah. Die Zwillinge. Zwillinge. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to do it in German. But we're <laughs> I've, I've, done no reading, I've done a reading in German. It was kind of challenging. <laughs> no, for me, English is fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. But when I am. Wenn ich etwas auf Deutsch erklären muss, kann ich das aber versuchen zu suchen, ja? zu, zu tun. Kann ich so versuchen zu tun. Also. Thank you. Yeah. If I don't get it in English, <laughs> I ask you in German again. Okay, cool. But if you need me to explain something a little bit, I don't mind. It's it's fun for me, anyway. So, um, okay. So, yeah. So that's the general thing, right? So now we're going to go into, first of all, what the Ascendant also means in a deeper way. So Ascendant is in Aquarius. So what that usually means is that we look into the planet that rules that sign. Why? Because it helps us to describe more about your, well, parts of the whole picture. When we do a real astrology, is isn't about... This is the sign and this sign. It's not separate. Everything is connected. Everything. 
So we have to look at Uranus. So where is Uranus? Right here. Uranus was in Scorpio. Okay. So what that means is that you tend to package yourself as this sort of unique person, but you're also quite deep. Right? You want to tell people like I'm quite unique, but I'm also very like I and I really embody and enjoy very like profound, meaningful, you know, experiences. Right? Um, and it's very very deep. But here's the thing: your Aquarius, sorry, Uranus was in retrograde, so. For you, later in life, you only started kind of tapping into that uniqueness. You started tapping into that much later in life. Maybe maybe much later, yeah. In your early life, you didn't know how to be really unique. You just had to go with the flow. You had to do what others were doing, right? Um, and then we also have to look, by the way, into where Saturn is. So Saturn was in Leo. So Saturn is also the ruler of Aquarius. Aquarius has two ruling planets. Ruling planet just means the planet's energies, what they mean for that sign and how they fit with that sign. It's just what it means. It's not that important. It just it just helps us as astrologers kind of clarify what it means for you to you know when you're when we're doing readings. So with Saturn being in Leo, it also means that it's um, you tend to also have a very, uh, what do you call this? The way you package yourself to the world, there's a hidden sort of magnanimosity about you. You want to, you want people to notice you. You want people to, uh, or at least how you present yourself to the world, you want that recognition. You want, uh, what do you call it? Validation. You want some sort of like, there's a lot of curiosity behind it as well. Because Leo is the sign that's also called the eternal child. Leo is the eternal child. So there's a part of you that wants to be like that, even though you like communities, even though you want to be in groups, or you, you know, you're, you're okay with that. At least okay with it. So with it in Aquarius, that's generally also what it means. You... Um, there's a uniqueness about you, but you also want to kind of feel like I need a bit, a bit, a bit of attention. I need some connection with people. You need some yeah, creativity is part of it as well. Not just innovation. Innovation is an Aquarian uh, trait. It's an Aquarian trait. It's an Aquarian um, aspect. We call it aspect, a trait, like a personality trait. So. Innovation, uniqueness, um, also rebellion. You kind of want to be so different that it's like, mm, I don't want rules, right? So, but you're also kind of very deep, which you which you later realized, right? Because of your Uranus placement there. Here's the other thing. Your person, so every planet, every planet in astrology, is um, ties into a side or a what are it called of the personality. You know how they say. You know how it said you can be more than one thing, right? You know what that means, right? It means every there's always a different aspect of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So for you, what this what I'm gonna go right into Uranus right here. When you started going to things that were of Things that, when you started to learn about your own philosophy, your own, um, you can say you can say higher education is part of this as well. But eventually, yes, you kind of typically you have these planets together. We have three planets here um, together. Let's just say let's call it together, which to me signifies this sort of like highly like. You just want to live life. You just wanted to go into, you know, whatever you believed in so strongly, your philosophy, um, whenever you went traveling as well. You had this sort of like, I just want to live it. But 
in retrograde, you kind of doubted that. You're like, I don't know how to be in the moment. I don't know how to be open to change. I don't know how to be like unique. And, you know, so it's kind of, it felt kind of strange for you, right? But again, as you got older, it opened up. This retrograde, again, we're talking about this as in like when you were born. And as you got older, maybe it's still there. It's still a dominant energy. So it means that you kind of doubted yourself in many ways, especially when you went to university or college. Um, people you started to learn with, probably around your 20s, maybe. Okay. Um, and that's just what it is like. So I'll explain a little bit what I, I'm saying here. So Ixion is a part of astrology that is about finding your bliss. Okay, it's really like true, real, like deep, in-depth, like happiness. Um, with it being in Scorpio, it means that you really like to go deep into things. But again, with the research, we sorry, with the retrograde there. You can see the small R. There's a retrograde. Retrograde means it pulls back. Mm -hmm. Right? It just means that the planet's expression is not full. It's kind of hidden. So for you, it was more about internal bliss. It was like, what is it that's going to make me really happy? So you probably questioned a lot of the university structures, like the acad academia uh, philosophies that they had. All those things like what the fuck is this with all this money why, why is it so expensive why am i paying what is this what are you doing right so and at the same time you question trying to feel like with the flow of things in that area of your life which is usually you know higher education university academics also traveling and foreigners as well. Foreign businesses, foreign experiences, foreign opportunities, languages, traveling. Yes. Uh huh. Do I don't say anything. Oh, okay. I, 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 I thought I heard something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And at the same time, with Uranus, there's Uranus rules sudden changes, sudden change, sudden unexpected changes. So, hmm. It was very kind of unusual for you. I bet, at least internally, you're kind of like, huh, I don't know how to be not only unique, but kind of, you kind of had this question about whether your purpose towards life, like your purpose in life towards change was like, Am I ready for that change? So in a way, you kind of consistently questioned yourself internally. There was an awkwardness about it, right? With like, especially with changes, you're like, mm, I don't know about that, right? Especially when it comes to education, uh, higher education, academics, travel, language, etc. Okay, that's a very ninth house stuff. So. There's also a bunch of things here, but I wanted to focus on these three because we were talking about Uranus earlier. That's why I'm looking at Uranus now. Um, Uranus was conjunct Mercury. So what that means is there's, um, when it comes to relationships, because this is the seventh house, what that usually means is that it's almost like you're very practical with the way you communicate. You need to kind of something physical. You need some sort of like, there's a lot of like, you're very intuitive actually. You're very intuitive, but it has to be intuition that is um, something that you can put your hands on, something that is very material, something that is very, um, it's grounded here in the three dimension, it's third dimension. Um, but it also means that you kind of groove slowly into understanding your perceptions. Your intuition was kind of like, almost like closed in. It was open, but it was kind of just like, uh, it wasn't like blocked or anything. 
but it was just it took you a long time to really perceive and understand things you're like what is going on like, i don't understand that it's not you always needed to learn through doing right? especially when it comes to relationships any agreements you get into any sort of contract any sort of maybe marriage as well marriage is part of the seventh house so for you it was like so as you got older then you started to go oh now i know how to communicate now i can intuit things now i can understand things right a bit more that was later in life or at least it's still happening <laughs> that's saturn saturn is the planet of limitations saturn is saturn is the teacher okay saturn teaches you you got to be patient otherwise you'll never get anything saturn likes to do that but saturn also rules karma saturn rules that if you make a certain choice a decision in life you have to accept that there are consequences but this is why karma rule i uh, sorry saturn rules karma but it also means that it's connected to fear because when you're talking about boundaries right what's beyond boundaries oh what's scary so you're right so for you it's like when you probably learned about relationships that were kind of like like maybe you felt like there's something about this person i can't i can't figure it out but i'm not sure so you probably didn't go in there so you didn't know how to communicate you didn't know how to express yourself also mercury is about self-expression as well this is where you have your identity right your identity here is in cancer so that means actually both your sun and your moon okay so sun in cancer is like usually when people say oh your star sign right this is your star sign oh your cancer okay <laughs> so you you really identify with security you identify with family you identify with safety the home food okay food is something that's like you know you're like mm, okay but not just food healthy food because it's in the sixth house okay or at least it could go the up it could go the opposite opposite direction as well it could go unhealthy food maybe as well maybe like certain like things that you really love to eat things that are very um like dairy you probably enjoyed a lot of dairy you probably enjoyed a lot of things that are very um what do you say cancer is like um very substantial food right foods that made you feel very like warm food maybe, yeah maybe you like warm food as well or comfortable food comfort food any type of comfort food um that's you know it's like oh okay that's good for you um however there's two th there's two things that are happening here your moon which rules your as well uh how you get energized is that is that energy it's ruled by the moon so that means you feel very at home with the things that you enjoy related to the sign so that means it's like again comfort ease um you also like the water okay you enjoy the water yeah um and so you 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 gravitate you gravitate towards things that are very comfortable but in a very like enjoy again it could be healthy or unhealthy type of food um because with this your son in the sixth house sorry with your son in the sixth house it means that you're also virgo it means you have as you you also identify a little bit with perfectionism getting things right getting things in order right right so you you want things to be also kind of pure so things so maybe for you like any type of activities that you get into any sort of like things that are fun for you it has to be 
like decent. It has to be, I would say with Virgo, it's probably like, so Cancer and Virgo together, comfortable, but at the same time, there's a lot of technicality behind it. Right? So you probably enjoyed things like, uh, very, I don't know, comfortable remedies, like um, something to do with herbs, remedies, little things. Um, health was definitely, health is definitely important to you, right? So maybe when you were younger, it wasn't that important. But as you got older, you started realizing, oh, okay, I'm not feeling good. I feel very kind of like low energy. Why is that? Then you started to figure out, oh, okay, because you also needed to be honest with it. This is where we got into the bigger planets, the other planets, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the other chart, okay? Because I need to see the aspects. The aspect lines are like these ones, the blue, the red. I need to see those so I can see the relationship between the aspects of your personality. We all have this. We all have different signs. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> now we have more lines. Okay. So are you okay up to this point? Are you, how do you? Just living and <laughs> seeing a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, that's your Saturn Mercury thing going. It's like you just sit back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, with come when it comes to your health, you know, you identify with a healthy lifestyle, but still comfortable. You know, um, I'm actually going to go into my. Uh, actually, I have a cheat sheet here. Mm -hmm. So your son, okay, so we're going to go into a little bit, we're going to digress a little bit into what I call, what, what's called medical astrology. I don't do medical astrology, but this is important here because your son is in the sixth house. So that means that um, health-wise, you actually, let's take a look at the aspects to your son. Here we have, ah, this means that, um, first of all, you tend to continuously transform through relationships. You transform through relationships, Libra. This is the path that you're headed towards. This is probably, because you're probably in past lives, you're so used to being independent. Being kind of like a leader it's very it's like a comfort zone for you you're like i want to be by myself i want to do things i want to explore i want to do things my way particularly with uh, you don't see it here but okay your this is your north node your south node is in 19 degrees aries which is around here you can't see it right now but that's where it is so that means that in your past life or past lives you were yes used to that leader being a leader being kind of an example a pioneer you know someone who just want you have a lot of initiative it's comfortable for you to take initiative it's comfortable it's like huh i know how to do this i know how to be curious i know how to do it you're kind of um also very uh, invested in i would say money anything to do with money anything to do with like, you know, expressions of money. Uh, Self-worth is also in this house. So that means that you, um, anything that has value, you know how to go get it. So you're very enterprising as a person. You're very comfortable with that. That's your past life. What you're learning this life, partnerships. Any sort of partnership is kind of, maybe still kind of like a little foreign to you. There's a bit of like, I don't know if I should go into that partnership. I don't know if I want to. So maybe there's trust issues as well. Okay. You're you're squ you're you're doing this. What's going on? <laughs> um, I see a lot of familiar things when you just talk about it because uh, what you told about my past lives, it 
really this time because I had uh, a lot of regressions the last few weeks and it all shows up that the last time when I was here or in other spaces I have to do it by myself. I want to stay away from ordinary people. I have to do big things but only for me and the, this life is just to get into relationship with my family, with my kids, with my client, mm -hmm. with my soulmate. So everything is about getting in contact and learning to this. So this is okay. It sounds familiar. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're the past, at least this year, you probably, hold on. And I lost a lot of uh, good friends the last few months. Yeah. So that's understandable. Yeah. Because um, you're trying to be real. You're trying to balance these energies. So what's probably been happening is the in. Hold on. Go back here. So I don't have the transits right now. Transits are planets that are actively moving each time. Transits means they're the ones that are truly active right now. Where are the planets? Where are they? Right. Um, so recently, at least this year, you probably felt this pull towards more like not only feeding your, yourself, but what it did probably did for you, particularly you, is that it kind of brought back a lot of past life stuff, past life issues, right? How to be independent but at the same time working with people because into today what's happening today is um i'll show you the transits okay so the transits as of today may 10th as of today are where was, where was the, aries right here so your south node was in Aries, right? South node was in Aries. The collective south north node is in 15 degrees Aries. Yours was in 19 degrees Aries. Very close. So what the people want, the general you know, humans, we want, or what we're headed towards is that whole like figuring out ourselves, being independent, finding our own sort of sense of freedom, right? But for you, it's like the opposite is happening. So there was a pull towards that, and you had this sort of, did you did you feel the separation a little bit? Did you felt kind of disconnected a little bit? Or do you still feel that sometimes? Uh, I've seen it a lot, a lot of times, but uh, you, weeks ago, my mentor just played up with me. We work about 12 years together and then yeah. and with him I have no connection to my old friends and no one connects me, so I'm lost. Yeah. But I'm on my own, so yeah. I have to deal with it. Yeah, because especially about a month ago, um, Uranus, they're still in conjunction right now. They're kind of dividing now, they're separating. Um, but what that meant was like these sudden changes are going to happen. You see, you remember earlier today, in this session today, remember, I was I was like tinkering through the files here, I was going, tch, tch, and all of a sudden, something pulled back. And I was like, I didn't do that. That's what's happening. Uh -huh. Okay. This is Uranus. Uranus also rules electricity and technology. That's what I, you know. So, <laughs> the key is expect the unexpected. Okay. Okay. Expect the unexpected, especially this year. Expect the unexpected. Just do it. And bigger, 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 bigger. Right. The chart of the United States, yes, a country has a chart also. Their chart has sun conjunct. Conjunct means the aspect is like together. It's like two cars driving in the same direction. That's like a conjunction. conjunction. So with Jupiter conjunct Uranus, 
but Jupiter is in the United States conjunct their sun. This is why, this is, um, you know, if you're talking about Jupiter, sir, so we're talking about Jupiter, right? Where Jupiter is the planet of opportunities. So it also means money making. So that means business. This is why a lot of Americans go into businesses. <laughs> it's part of their culture. Okay? That's the energy. I'm just giving an example about the power of Jupiter as well. The power of Jupiter is not just in our psyche. It's also a collective, well, psyche. <laughs> okay? So with Jupiter there, I, it expands today. It's expanding Uranus for sudden changes. What? 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 But the more we awaken, the more we awaken, that's just not going to be like, oh, okay. You know, it's like a use, you, you get used to it. So, for you, I would say, sorry, let's go to this one. For you, I would say, like, it's not that shocking for you. In a way, you're kind of used to it. There's a certain part of you that's used to, like, sudden changes, right? Would you agree? Yes. <laughs> Sounds nice. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Right. So, okay. Hmm. So going back to your chart, uh, with this specific chart here, um, what was I talking about? Ah, so you, like I said, you identify with that, but you also are being, you also continue to experience a lot of issues with integrity, right? Uh, but because this is the sixth house, it, we're going to get a little bit more on the physical side of things. So the sun rules our heart, upper back. For males, it's the right eye. Okay. Uh, so the cardiovascular system. Right. Do you understand cardiovascular right there? Yes, the heart, the wings, the right, that's right. Okay, and also the back, the spine. Um, and also fevers, something to do with fevers as well. Not necessarily fevers up here, but like fever in general, because it's fire, right? Sun is fire, it rules Leo. So because your sun was square, it's a square aspect. Remember we talked about conjunction, two cars. A square yeah. is almost like this. One car is going this way, the other car is going this way. So there's always going to be a challenge with aspects with square aspects, it's 90 degrees. It signifies a lot of challenges with where you're supposed to be headed, where your soul decided to be going. And for you, anything to do with this, your heart. I think your heart, there's, the, there's a heart here. Do you have issues with like the heart somewhere around this area? The heart, chest area, upper back? Have you had issues with that? Yes, uh, with the heart, a little, a little extra distorts and a lot of injuries in the neck and a lot of back pain through all the years. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of my weakest part of the body. Not, not, yeah. not at all, I have a lot of issues in my body, but uh, this part is and also emotional, okay. opening the heart, get from the heart, out of the heart, working from the heart. It's mm -hmm. is a main topic for me. Yeah. Especially because, you know, when it comes to sex and have fun and be recreational or just have fun and connect with people, even with children. If there's a part of you that goes, like the, you just don't feel secure in those relationships, that's what yeah. that's triggered, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The stomach area rules digestion. Digestion is probably also, it's affected your digestion as well. You get issues with digestion. When I was younger, yes, but if you, uh, you explain it from the food, I, when I was younger, I was not in the healthy food direction. I like, energetic food like uh, fast food or all kinds of 
sweet ones and so uh -huh. yes and the last five six years i changed my way of eating and how i get yes not my food and how to cook and all these things and it's getting really stable now okay yeah. but when i was younger it was always a little mm -hmm. kind of great okay because when you were also young i didn't mention this earlier but so there's two more kind of foreign or like kind of like scary uh this is the eighth house every time we experience in oh sorry Every time we experience any 8th house stuff, 8th house is the house of fear. Literally like, things that we're like fucking like scared shit of. Okay? Death. Um, taboos. Sexual taboos. Things that people don't want to talk about. Okay? This is where it is. So, for you, it was in what's called an intercepted house. An intercepted house means that this part of your life was kind of kind of like closed in. It was almost like you didn't recognize where you're going. Opposite house as well, which means your house of money. So when you were younger, any sort of things that you valued, any possessions that you had, you kind of didn't know what to do with it. It's just kind of like maybe there was a lack as well. Maybe it was kind of, I don't know, maybe your money was a problem. Um, but what I'm going to see here is that, first of all, Iris is in your second house. Here's where it gets a little complicated. Iris is where we get often like tested. Iris is where we get um, asked to see the truth of reality by kind of seeing the absurdity of the human condition, right? On a personal level, that's in the collective level. On a personal level, Eris is a part of us that wants to, just wants to be, um, I guess you can say genuine. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying? It's like, I don't know what I'm talking about. No, <laughs> I do. Um, I'm going to consult my, my cheat sheet here. Okay, here we go. So clarity. Eris is about clarity of choice and the direction of where you're supposed to be headed. It's all about clarity. Eris is kind of weird because Eris, not many people are aware of their own Eris. Eris is like the part of us that wants to, uh, what do you call that? Test. The closest word I can think of is to test things but in a way that is very vindictive and very kind of like it eris promotes arguments <laughs> eris promotes chaos and just crazy stuff like crazy fucking shit like eris is also the part of us that goes like okay i'll just try that see what happens then if it goes crazy he just goes okay with crazy it's almost passive, but in a very sort of like, I'll bring the battle to you. I will bring the battle to you. I will let you, but you will not be the cause of the fight. People will not know that. People will just think, oh, you're just offering an opinion. You're just offering an idea. So what that means for you on a personal level is that when we experience this in the second house, it's almost like perhaps you kind of just played around with money or possessions does that ring a bell did you feel like you kind of just because you were young back then at this time you didn't know what it was plus it was it, it was intercepted so that means it's like i don't know how to work with this energy <laughs> i don't know exactly how it's really no clear about this part. so we're going to go back into your north node because i wanted to talk more about your north node and how it's in libra right it's um because it's in libra or because it was in libra 
we look into Venus. And this is why, um, because every time we have a retrograde planet in our chart, it means that we have a certain insecurity about it. It's not fully expressed. So if, for example, if you had, let's say, Venus in retrograde, for example, it means that it's hard to relate with people, right? So this shows me you didn't have a lot of clarity when it came to money or your sense of personal, physical, material freedom. You, there was kind of like, I didn't know, you didn't know where it was headed. So, but we're going to go back into Venus here because that rules. Venus also rules Libra. Um, so... How you transform, right, your eighth house right here, how you try to transform is through relationships. That's how you're going to transform. That's where you're headed towards. Um, you're also going to pretty much get, uh, you have to deal with the losses of those things. You actually transform to relationships by losing the ones that you don't need. But you're also going to have to learn how to be not distant from people, more like self-sufficient. You want to be your own parent. It's like you're self-nurturing yourself. Right? You're learning to be okay with uh, the powerlessness and the fears that come along with it. You're going to be okay with when I say you're going to be okay, what I mean by that is Pluto is going to grind you to the dirt. It's going to push you into the floor and be like, no, that's not real. That's not real. That's not real. That's not real. What does your soul want? And so this is where you're headed toward. This is part of your transformational process. Because you probably had issues with, uh, namely, right? Your mother, your, you and her kind of, you didn't get a lot of, right? I'm assuming that's what I see here. You have series, this is series, square, okay, square, the moon, right here. So a lot of nurturing, you didn't get a lot of your nurturing needs met. They weren't met. This is also probably why you actually enjoyed unhealthy food. You enjoyed food that you're just like, when you were young, like, oh, I'm just going to have fun with the food. I mean, anything unhealthy, uh, probably sweet stuff as well. You probably got into sweet things. You like sweet things when you were younger. Not necessarily yeah. all the time. Yeah, comfort food, sweet things, desserts. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but... That was a result of not getting proper, you know, um, nurturing as you got older. Right? Series is self-nurturing, but it also means where we experience gains and losses. It's fluctuating energy. By the way, I forgot to mention, series is also, series also rules, um, this is a big word, um, What's the word? Epi, 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 epidemiology? Epidemiology, which is like how the environment affects your DNA. Your DNA. So whenever you lost relationships, any form of relationships, it affected you in a very emotional way, physically as well. In fact, your, it affected your health deeper than you thought it was. It's not just like, oh, I have a heart problem. Oh, I have this. No, it affects you on a DNA level. Because that's where you're transforming. In series. Um, you're probably... Uh, did you also have issues with your kidney? Is there any kidney stuff as well? Not so much. It is uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes, so, so yeah, mm -hmm. but not, not the last three or four or five years. Okay, okay, cool. 
big one here. Uranus is a big one here for you. Uh, oh, Uranus um, changes for you, especially particularly like your own uh, philosophy of things in life, your own belief systems, any sort of belief system you have right, in yourself. Whatever it is, your philosophy, belief system, same thing. Um, it was very kind of like unknown. You were very, you didn't know how to deal with the changes. You didn't know how to be. Um, I'm looking for a word here. One second. Okay. I sometimes, uh, like I said, I like to cheat. So cheating is a good thing. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not it. Here. So let's take a look. So retrograde Uranus is uh, may dissipate the final scene. Okay. Uh, okay, it's almost like you didn't know how to be yourself around. Maybe in the academic circles, you didn't you just didn't know how to be yourself. It's almost like you suppressed your individuality. Mm -hmm. my, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's the big thing. But with it being opposite of Chiron, it's one of the things you continuously, I probably still today, you continuously learn how to work with. Um, you get, you get kind of lured into specific things like when it comes to money because this is Taurus. Taurus is Taurus rules the second house. So Taurus is about same thing as second house. It's like your financial things, pe money, uh, possessions, things that you value, your own values, how you value yourself, self-worth, right? Okay, it's like it revolves around the sun I don't know, are we close to 2,000 years? 1,100 maybe, between that range, okay? And what that means is that Sedna, in the mythology of Sedna, she was the one who got pulled in one direction and the other because she was very trusting. Uh, Sedna represents in us that feeling of being abandoned, especially by the big the systems. Sedna is a part of us that get lured into these little things like, oh, this is good for you. This is good for you. This is good for you. So for you, it's all about money. And you're still learning through that, the information you get. But what that does is that because Chiron is there, it's part of your wounding. For you, your wounding is with Chiron. When I say wounding, I mean literal wounding as well. Like things that you've not just lost, but like, things that you continuously need to discover. Um, so pain that needs to be turned into a gift. That's Chiron. So for you, it's to say you probably had issues with either the ear area here, the throat, this area right here, right? You probably had issues with those, yeah? Most, mostly the ear, yes. It's yeah. a big issue, ah. mm -hmm. and this area is getting better, but it was also an issue, and this, yes, was, that was a big injury when I was 20, 21, I yeah, that makes just sense. broke my spine in this area. Mm -hmm. Not directly, but I get a big compression at as to be like this a lot of time and mm -hmm. I'm getting up right now better. Do you, do you have issues with balance? That is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's take a look. So, based on what I remember, okay, so you had your Uranus opposite your Chiron, right? So, not much on Uranus there. However, Uranus is square several things. So you see this right here. So Uranus is in seven degrees. We usually look at the degrees in astrology to be more specific. Uranus is actually square to all of this right here. 
So <laughs> you're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> ah, lots of retrograde. You have a lot of retrograde planets in your chart. Um, that's okay. It's a challenge for me, so it's good. So we're going to do it one by one. Break it down and put it together. So Thetis is uh, parental expectations. Thetis is a part of ourselves that want to be responsible, especially as a parent. Once you became a when you became a parent, or even if like parental like expectation, meaning like what you you know take care, when you should take care of something. That's a parental thing, right? It's a parental role. You are a guide. You are a caretaker. You're a guardian. So that means that once you once you do that, it becomes that part of you. So this is part of your ascendant. We're going to go back into the ascendant. So remember how we talked about earlier, or how I said that you're, it's your mask. It's how you present yourself to the world. So for you, it's you kind of doubted yourself quite a lot, especially you know, earlier on in life, right? Um, because you wanted to be kind of a you wanted to be a unique parent. You wanted to be like, oh, I want to be, I want to help this child grow. I want to help this child be themselves. Because you didn't really have it, right? You didn't really have it, especially as you got older. You're like, I don't know how to work with this, right? So with all the losses too that you had, you're like, personal freedom, uh, value. So you kind of, it's something that kind of, you know. You said, I don't want that for my child. I don't want that for children. I don't want that for any person. I am parenting at the same child like self. That also, how do, you, how do you say, reflected back into what you wanted to the world to see. Right? So being a good parent and child at the same time was kind of like, I don't know how to work with that. There's a lot of awkwardness behind that. But at the same time, it's something that's a part of your journey. This is destiny. It's a part of your destiny. It's part of your journey that you have to take. That's like, don't know how to, you know, I, I, you were just unsure about it. And then you had to own uh, things that you basically rejected, disown and rejected in yourself because of how you were, how you grew up. In fact, how you grew up, at least in terms of like relationships, right? Is that I'm going to skip a tier right here. Um, it's almost like um, you mm, felt this. Uh, let me see, Prometheus. Do you know the story of Prometheus? Do you remember of your Greek mythology? Okay, so Prometheus represents. Yeah, Prometheus represents foresight. Being able to see what's needed, right? Um, naturally, for you, this is something that was you knew how to do that. People would probably you know, suck the life out of you. You felt you're kind of like Lamea represents energy vampires. Lamea represents also. Um, there are some in my family. Yeah. 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 Right. Very, very ego, not only, well, ego, the ego can be healthy. Okay? A healthy ego knows how to balance 3D with a body, okay? That's that. But Lamea in ourselves, especially, well, for you, it's your relationship. So what that did is that it kind of, you forgot how to be childlike, which is, again, the Leo thing, right? And then it's almost like you're surrounded by family that was, um, or relationships, that only wanted to do cure things because they kind of wanted to just run away from the pain and not deal with it and just kind of just like i'm just gonna do this I'm, we're just gonna solve it we're not gonna talk about it we're just gonna forget about it it was like a lot of escapism in a way sort of mm -hmm. so that in turn affected your own child parent self okay and you had to work through your shadows but you also had to do it through, uh, how do I explain Imhotep? Uh, kind of work with your own 
didn't, well, first of all, you didn't know how to work with your own ability to uh, astrology, you ruled astrology. So I'm surprised, like, I'm kind of curious if you were ever interested in astrology, because uh, that's Imhotep. Um, uh, yeah. I just tried to get in it two or three times, but I don't have a good... Mm -hmm. Good. So, okay, so Imhotep ruled sort of like mystici mystical side, like your, your, your esoteric self, your your connection to the outer realms, your connection to that. You kind of lost that, you know? You had to be very technical and very scientific-based. Everything had to be in a box, right? Even though it was unique, even though it was like, you know, um, different, it was still kind of like very much in the mind rather than balance of left brain, left uh, right, left brain, right brain. You know, you, right? This is why your north node is in Libra in the first place. Libra is about balance. This is why your north node, your path, what, what is, it's not just your path. I'll explain a little bit more. So there's also Themis here. Themis is see what else it says here into your learning yeah yes because i just left all the academic and to, to do it my way and so uh, when they ask where are the scientific behind your work or what are you doing here where are the yes uh, the proofs of it yeah, they wanted proof. Yes, exactly. That's the whole, that's the Lamea here earlier, earlier, right? Yeah, people would be like, mm. and then you also have it square, this section right here. Cassandra is the asteroid that deals with, you just know, but nobody believes you unless you prove them, prove to them what they want to know. But I was like, but you just know, right? So, yeah. Um, I'm, Actually, let's let's keep let's keep going. I kind of <laughs> sorry. There's so much, but this is why I love working with so many things because it means I can get into really really detailed things. Um, you're in actually directly astrology and astronomy. She can see the maps. It's the part of us that understands the connections between the stars and spirituality. It's a part of us. So. Um, I'm sure you kind of dabbled in a bit of astronomy or astrology when you were in university a little bit. You dabbled, literally just not looked into it, like dabbled. Like... When I was uh, in this age, I, uh, when I was really young, I was a uh, lot of in this energetic field and, uh, and then I skip everything and I went just, like you say, in the box and just do it from the grounded, from the scientific based work. And then I just get checked into the more spiritual way and I have to deal with it and to get balance it the last year. You probably also had issues with overindulgence. Maybe you study too much. Again, please? Maybe you study too much. Overindulgence. I study yeah. a lot. Yeah, you probably had, but too much, probably. Bacchus represents, the Bacchus is an, it's, um, again, it's overindulgence, but also Bacchus represents um, appreciation of what you work hard on. So for you, it's almost like you had to learn how you went through the wounding. That even though you have problems with memory, okay, that's nemesine. Nemesine rules memory. But real memory doesn't happen just here, right? Real memory actually goes deeper into the subconscious. Into that's why you're in Akashic Records. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm like, oh, that's why you're in Akashic Records. Okay, you're tapping into real memory. That is real memory. So there you go. So you're integrating those gifts that you had into what you're already doing. So good job. Um, 
Let's take a look what else is going on. Uh, okay, here I go. I think this is the Jupiter thing. No, I want to go back into Sun. Well, we already talked about a little bit about the potential for abuse. Growing up, there was abuse there. Right? So, especially with like relationships, even like romantic ones. Um, but this is a funny one for me. Horus and Narcissus. You know Narcissus, right? Narcissus. Yes. Right? When you, as you got older, especially when you started joining communities, because this is the 11th house, um, it's almost like you didn't understand how to be selfish. You didn't understand how to be, to that point, embracing your own inner narcissism. Because I want to go deep into not just... Okay, so narcissism isn't just narcissism. Okay, narcissus is... When I did my research on all these asteroids, I literally worked with like 50, more than 50. It's like, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> I do more than regular astrologers. Um, see, there we go. For me, that's my thing. I'm, I've, I've learned to embrace my narcissism. But what that means is not being controlling. It's validating myself for the real abilities that I can that I actually have, the gifts and the choices that I made. So narcissist is actually unconscious self-love and self-trust. Okay, because narcissist um, got rejected. The story of narcissist is he got rejected too. So that's the shadow. So when we get rejected, you know that you know that saying you've heard it before. You've heard it. I'm pretty sure you've heard it. Heard I heard it about yesterday. Oh, okay. But <laughs> yesterday you know I, I had to deal with narcissism, and it was a big issue in my mind. So I'm very clear about it. Yes, but uh, the thing about narcissism, not just narcissism, is that it's the same thing as it's linked to rather. <laughs> The saying we have today, it's not a saying, but you probably heard of it already. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So the reason we have narcissistic people is because they did not get the, the necessary, your basic needs and their actual needs met. So what happens, they become vampires, these energy vampires, because they're like, I'm not, I didn't get it. So it's a subconscious wounding. So how that what that means for this, what I'm seeing here in this chart is that when it comes to communities, you may come across narcissism, or rather you kind of may still question your own inner narcissism. It's almost like maybe you want to reject it. I don't want to be selfish, but that's the key. You have to heal through going deep into more of the subconscious because what you're doing actually what you're doing is a great thing is you're doing acacia records right great but there's also shadow work shadow work goes deep because that way when you go deep into your childhood memories you can heal those and then you can join forward you can also go up you can you go down and you go up that's balance that's what wholeness is because we and, and i'm sure you probably heard of this the universe is actually whole on its own. But when it started to identify with things like the idea of I, it started to be fragmented and then fragmented and fragmented and fragmented and fragmented. And it just kept going and kept going and kept going. Right? But what happened with, with those fragments is that some got suppressed through the form of being human. When the uni we are the universe having a human experience, right? But we experience fragmentation. We experience separation. Parts of us, we suppress ourselves. Parts of us, we elevate. The ones we suppress are the ones we get more of, the ones that we attract. Because we don't reject it. It's kind of like going into facing like something like, I don't know, like I do cold showers. 
when I started doing not just cold showers, but it, I'll tell you later. Um, when I started doing this thing that included cold showers, I no longer got sick. I didn't get. I don't get colds. I don't get flus. I don't get sick because I faced that cold. I faced it. I went straight into it. This is exactly what it is. So the shadow is that thing. When we face our fears, when we face that thing, we say, pedophiles, murderers, cannibals, what the fuck? Ah, ah. When we face that aspect of ourselves, it doesn't mean that we're saying, oh, yes, I want to, I want to rape children. No, 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 no. I mean, facing why? Why would that person be doing that? But we have to go deeper into just not only what we think it is. We have to go in deeper to, into the subconscious. Childhood memory is very helpful. Childhood, childhood trauma is the reason why we have neurosis and crazy and all these things. Because it's not our fault that it's like, oh, we attract people. Because it's like, oh, I'm not worried. No, 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 it's not that. It's just we, when we face, it's kind of like... um. I think you kind of understand it, right? Like when we, we are not, we're going to attract more of what we reject because it's kind of like, um, what's an analogy for this one? It's kind of like if you push down like in a sort of a tube, right? Let's say you have like a bottle, right? You push down the content in it. And we're just suppressing it. Where is it going to go? Actually, first of all, bottle is not a really good analogy. But it's kind of like a tube. Like it's a tube, right? Life is like, the universe is like a tube, right? You push that one aspect of yourself back. Where is it going to go? It's going to show up on the other side. Sorry, not a really good analogy, but <laughs> it's kind of like that. I get what you want to tell, yeah. Yeah. So... For you in this case, with the narcissist horse conjunction there, is that when you start to really embrace your inner narcissism, meaning self-trust, self-love, going back deep into your your history, your childhood memory, the trauma, facing all that stuff, and why, and why would a narcissist suck the life out of others anyways? Because they don't have it in themselves, or they forgot forgot that they have it. So when you go back into those, you start to open up this horse. Did you know that horse is, so maybe you didn't know this, but horse, sorry, horse is uh, the five clairs. Five clairs. Clairvoyance, clairsentience, etc. Okay. Claircognizance. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. So psychic abilities. But I'm pretty sure that part of you has already opened that up a little bit. That's why you're going into Arcasia Gregor. So the more you embrace what's below, you're, this is going to open up. It's like a tree, right? A tree cannot just get things from above. A tree has to also get things from the bottom. That's true. Exactly. It's just the way nature works. Otherwise, we wouldn't have feet. <laughs> we don't, if we don't have feet, what? what? So there you go. Um, so there you go. And also, again, you have to also transform your inner Lucifer. Okay, <laughs> scary. It's like inner Lucifer. <gasps> Lucifer. Your inner darkness, your inner ego. It's part of your transformational process. So by doing that, you start to attract less abuse. You start to attract less of that stuff. And therefore... This is where the real money comes in, meaning true wealth from the inside. Okay? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm reading here as well. And it's okay to work through these things. You have Hecate, Her Heracles, you know, Heracles, Heracles. It's really hard work. Sometimes it's kind of like, oh, wait, so he's not, oh, you actually can do it. But you have to work at it. Nat it's natural for you, actually. Heracles shows here, six degrees, okay? This comes naturally to you, but you have to put effort into it. So that means that you're, I would say this is shadow work, okay? 
Um, there's this other part here that I probably don't need to mention. Not right. Oh, actually, I do. Your North Node in Venus. Okay. Desire to relate with others. It's a connection. You want to connect with people. Right. Um, naturally, when you're growing up, your home environment, you know, is you related through communication. You related through talking. You related through learning. But again, it wasn't really like what you wanted. What you wanted was emotional connection, nurturing, your basic needs met. That's what's important to you when you were a child, at, still today, right? So, but you didn't meet that, okay? Cancer makes you happy, which is the sun also, it's vitality. And the moon also makes you happy. But it's your basic needs. In order for that to happen, you wanted something more than blah, 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 talk, 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 information, information, learning, learning. No, connection. Emotional connection. Trust. I feel safe, secure. So when you started to realize that that's what you wanted, it's almost like you had this challenge in your life with how to work. Kite is the part of us that understands the its inner magic. Right? Um, but it's not just the magic that we think it is. It's connection with from as above, so below. It's witchcraft. As above, so below. Everything is connected. Everything. Right? That's magic. Magic is uh, what you believe in as well. So Hecate understands that. Retrograde for you though. So when you were a child, of course, you just I don't know how to connect. It's almost like you didn't you felt disconnected as a child. Right? Same thing with Persephone. So here Persephone is that part of us that wants to uh, it's almost like rebellious love. <laughs> I don't know how to describe Persephone. Um let's see what I have here. Uh, Persephone. Yeah, dark love. So, you, I don't know, I'm assuming you had experiences with that. Like, you got into, like, these kinky, sort of, like, dark, sort of, I don't know, relationships. Not necessarily relationships, but dark connections between, I would say, okay, this is the, this is the first house, fourth house. So, let's see what we can do. Ah. Extreme external validation. Mm. Is there anything like that growing up? Any sort of seclusion, isolation, away from the norms, victims, uh, unnurturedness, of course, that's what it says here as well. Okay. Hmm. Ventral striatum, something that's part of the brain. Okay, we're going to skip that. One. That's fine. But yeah, so that powerlessness. Again, as I go through all these things that I'm learning about, I'm working with a ton, a lots, 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 lots of asteroids. So it, these things help me. So I'm not just helping you. You are also helping me because I'm asking about, okay, because I can only go as far using my chart because my chart is my chart. Your chart is your chart. Meaning... Your journey is your journey. My journey is my journey. That's how it is. So, um, anyways. So there's that. So what it means for your direction is that this, um, it's all connected. Are you seeing the connection with all of it now? I see a lot of connections. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, I mean what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Um you have the ability to your wounds. You actually know how to do that. So your your inner Pluto is the one that goes. It continuously like rips you apart until you become resurrected into this new form. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Continuously. I have that. I have I have Sun conjunct Pluto. I go through transformation all the motherfucking time, all the time, 
Okay, so I understand. Um, this is why I'm also in astrology. <laughs> so um, I should have been in psychology. I don't know. Uh, what else? Any questions specific to any specific question before we move on? Because I feel like we're just going to go into different places. Do you have any specific questions about your life? Because I want to go into your progression chart. We don't need to go through everything. We just need to go through what it's important for you as of this moment. Because what I'm doing is I'm just telling you how you lived your life. <laughs> I could go into it more in detail, but what, do you have any questions? The main question is uh, how to uh, live my purpose in a healthy way without just getting stuck with uh, things that I don't have to figure out the full to get over it and uh, to get clear about how much or uh, which way to go in the future. Should I stay here here in my office or should I go out and open up to the world, to the whole world, or just ah, well. say, okay, people come to me if you like, or just show up and say, here I am, and use all these things you told me in, from this, 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 by the actor and yeah. And my health. What can I do for my health? Uh, so your path and your health. Okay. So first of all, based on just the first chart we went through, uh, it's, it's, this one's a little slightly different chart. You have to be completely honest with what it is you, not your ego, what it wants. The ego needs to acknowledge what the soul wants. The ego needs to acknowledge that I'm going to go into health first. Let's see what. Sorry, you probably saw a different chart I was looking at. Oh, okay. So you got your sixth house placement, so that's health. We usually look at the sixth house for that one. Okay. Circe, Apollo, Ganymede, Proserpina. So all these planets are actually Proserpina right here. These four asteroids conjunct here. There might be more. So learning to create boundaries that are healthy for you first and foremost. Okay? First and foremost. Um, I don't just mean like food. I mean when you need something, when you, need to, when you need to express something, especially emotions, they need to get validated. What I mean by validated, I mean it's in both directions. You need to validate them. You need to also be with others who validate your emotion. That when they, when you tell them, I'm feeling this way, they're not telling you, oh, don't feel this way, or they're telling you how to feel good. No. That doesn't work. It needs to be real. You need to sit with it. You need to lean in those emotions. And just like sit with it. And just go allow for it to happen. Right? If you want to swear, go fucking swear. Okay. Right? You can tell a person, <laughs> whatever, whatever. If you want to say, if you want to fuck, not really project. You don't want to necessarily project, but figure out why those emotions are there. Mm -hmm. Right? And really, like, sit with it. Because what's happening here is that. Um, First of all, I see here Ganymede. Ganymede is like, it's almost like there's a part of you that wants to be of service, but you're sacrificing your own basic needs for it. Ganymede is, Ganymede was this boy who was the cup bearer to Zeus. He was like a boy toy to Zeus. He was this sort of like, yeah, okay, daddy spanked me. You don't want to be like that kind of person. You want to be of service, but figuring out your own 
direction. Where am I headed? Where are my basic needs? You start with basic needs. This, for you, this is important because it's your moon rules your, it's part of your personality, what's making you happy. Creating also those necessary boundaries, choosing who to be with. So that's what it is. You know, don't just balance between, it shouldn't be sacrifice, it should just be service. But sometimes we think, no, service means sacrifice. Nope. That's not what it is. Service comes, service starts with you first. Like you're nurturing yourself. Right? So I think that once you open that up, remember we, we talked about earlier, well, I said earlier that you had this uh, this placement. What was that? Um, hold on. Let's see here. Be a little bit more narcissistic. Embrace that aspect of yours. Okay. Right. That's what I would say. Because it's, it's not healthy to resist that. And then all of a sudden you're sacrificing yourself. Right. So. Um, let's see what it says for the sun. What else? Is there? Okay, there's more. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say there's more. Okay, so we already talked about these ones right here. Delphine, Penelope, Hebe, right here. So what this means is this, um, so Delphine is uh, visions, but Delphine we is, call. sorry? We only call Delphine, visions from, no, no, from not from Delphine, not Delphine, no, not Delphine, Delphine. And that's Delphine. Okay. Yeah, Delphine was a Delphine was a monster. He was uh, she was a titan in Greek mythology. Okay. Um, but Delphine was often kind of I guess you can say misunderstood. Meaning like what is really it's about gossip. Rumors are gossip. Right? Or knowing the difference between what is right for your health, for your body, versus what isn't. So I don't know, I feel like is there a part of you that believes? Um, actually, you can look at Neptune. Where's your Neptune? This is why it's good to be cautious about your relationships, people you relate with, because there might be gullibility. Neptune is Neptune is about its idealism, but there's so much belief in Neptune that it's like, I believe everything you're saying. <laughs> right. So be careful about. When I say visions in this case, it means like discernment. Right? Um, I recently worked with this other asteroid called Hebe. Hebe was something had something to do with ah rejuvenation and balance. So this collagen, do you take collagen supplements? Do you take anything for your bones, tendons, ligaments, skin? Yes. Your hair, probably also. Okay. That's on a physical level to yourself. Just for yourself. Not with family. No, I'm serious. Not with family, for yourself. Every morning when I, I, I am the first to get up and then I take a few minutes for me and just grounding and okay. get into my... A classic record and look what my dreams want to tell me or something like this. Yes, and okay. but I have to do more. I know I have to go out in the woods and sell centering. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there is time, and then sometimes there is more more family time needed. So mm -hmm. I try to level up. But you probably feel a sense of obligation. Don't you? Yeah. You have Ganymede. That's also Ganymede right there. Right. So because maybe you're afraid, part of you is still afraid of being detached. Because if you don't, it's almost like, well, you're going to lose the nurturing. <laughs> Be careful of codependency. 
it's not healthy. Okay, so it's not about as Teal Swan puts it. I love Teal Swan stuff. She says that um, it's not about compromise. Compromise is you sacrifice, I sacrifice. No, no, no. Balance mean in this balance has can real balance is achieved when we have a third option. Win win, win win. Okay, so you have to find time to not only validate yourself, really like also it's it's like it's like almost like you're retraining yourself. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So, but also learning to figure out because now you have a family, so that means that you have to balance your needs with their needs. But no sacrifice. Fuck sacrifice. That's the old world stuff. We're moving into a new age. We're, we're changing. No more sacrifices. Sacrifices is... There are some things we need to sacrifice because something else is more important. But it shouldn't be a sacrifice where just like you're neglecting your basic need. Especially emotional validation. Especially emotional validation, because that ties for you specifically. That ties in with how healthy you eat. Yes, yes, yes. Because otherwise, you want to balance. Exactly. There you go. Okay, so um, I'm a little surprised about this one, but not really. Um, I'm so okay. So we have here your son is full is an actual direct conjunct with. Sappho and Arachne. Once you start to become more confident in yourself, um, you start to start find the connections between relationships and pretty much everything. Arachne, Arachne in the mythology was the one who defeated, not defeated, she was in a contest with uh, Athena, but she won the contest. It was a weaving contest. So Arachne is this, like, she understands the connections just like Athena does. But she has the gift for understanding connectivity. It's almost like Arachne is like, um, Arachne is like the spider, right? So she knows how to spin reality. So it's something to do with manifesting. So, but it also means that Arachne also were, number one, and also that they be jealous about. Okay, so if you ever still experience those, that's their problem. That's their issue. Whatever. Right? It's also about being brave. Arachne is also about being brave and just being your true self. Health-wise, um, it's uh, it has a lot to do with. I don't know. What I discovered is something to do with the frontal cortex here, right here. And also the hippocampus, I'm not sure. Something to do with connectivity. Um, white matter, I'm not really sure what that is. I forgot what that is. But white matter is part of that as well. So it's part of the brain. There's something else, but for sure, like, really, that's arachne. She has divine gifts. But Sappho, or relatable, relatability. It's intimate love. She's also she also rules um, loyalty between friends. So intimacy, so deep friendships, but can also be associated with um, lesbian, like homosexual, but mainly women. But for you, I would say between you and your wife whatever it is, or your partner. But the point is, it's intimate love, right? How that ties into your second house. Between my relationship or not, I don't... Yes, yeah. 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 You and your, any sort of relationship you have, really, to be honest. Uh, but in this case, because it's the sixth house, um, it still ties into the frontal cortex. So kind of, it's awareness, really. It's being aware of not only your gifts, okay. yeah, but also acknowledging them, being brave about them, no matter what anybody says, okay. And at the same time, 
knowing that you can be sort of this vessel of because you're can you have cancer right cancer is cancer knows safety and connection that's just why there's this is why it's represented by the crab right you see this like the symbol right here right yeah and that's cancer so one side is one side could be dark which is codependency the other side could be uh nurturing there's nothing wrong with the actual codependency itself it's more like why do you have COVID dependency? So the journey here is to figure out what your dependency aspect of yourself means. Loyalty does not mean I'm sacrificing myself. Loyalty does not also mean that I own you or you own me. It's really about that. This, this is why it's like square your north node. A lot of the square your north node in Pluto. It means this is one of your, you're really learning how to do this. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Does that kind of make sense? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go into Venus because Venus rules Vir Virgo, uh, Libra, sorry. Uh, this is a funny one. Moira is actually the fates. You know, the fates in Greek mythology, remember? Uh, I don't know the word in English. What does it mean? Do you know it in French? Uh, destiny. The three women. Okay. Moira. Yeah, the past, present, future. So, okay, yeah. So what that means, because you have, because you have, uh, it conjunct Venus and Valentine, it's almost like you have to, mm, actually not that you have to, you actually already know how to do that. You know how to connect things and be real with your own personal the changes in your life with not only how you relate with others, love language. There's a book on it actually called Love Language. Have you heard of it? Yeah. yeah. I don't have it, but I heard about it. Yeah. yeah. So that's Valentine. Valentine is our love language. Valentine is like... Um, transcending egoic love. When I say egoic here, I mean unhealthy ego. Mm -hmm. right? A healthy ego, again, knows its place as a part of the whole. So it's both unique and universal. Okay? Yeah. That's a healthy ego. This is why shadow work is, I, for me, I, it's important. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's Valentine. So with Moira there, it means that you naturally learn how to see what the past has shown you and what the future can bring, but focusing on the present. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly. It's always the present. It always goes back down to the present. So... Because the Moira represent the um, destiny itself, fate itself. It's being okay with timelessness. This is basically Moira. Moira is timelessness. Um, it's it's part of like a kind of a thread of source energy. I don't know how to describe that. <laughs> so you basically being okay with beginnings and endings and the fact that those are not real <laughs> but at the same time they are real here they're real but in the grand scheme of things the, the big picture is they're not the they're not the only reality the higher reality. Yeah. but we shouldn't escape towards or do not bypass 3d experiences do not bypass any experiences especially I said this, I'm going to say it again. Emotional validation. Okay. Anyways, does that kind of answer your question a little bit? So, oh, direction, sorry. So, um, let me look into the north. Ah, uh, okay. It's something you work hard at. It's something that you're going to push through and you might feel like a part of you is getting punished for it sometimes. Um, 
And oh, we have trying. Okay, we have trying. Let's take a look here. Well, first of all, um, a sense of responsibility. Um, Cerberus is a sense of responsibility as if we owe the world something or we owe others something. Niobe is a part of us that um, is, we like to showcase things. We like to, because we're so proud of something, our accomplishment. But sometimes it could go beyond that. It can go extreme by saying, I'm better than you. That's Niobe. Angel is angel. <laughs> it's divine guidance. So what that means together, what that means is mm, figuring out what your responsibility is to yourself, but being also proud of it. Again, I think we're kind of doing the same, saying the same things. I'm just, I'm just being a little bit more general. I'm not being that 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 specific, but I am connecting the three, right? Because they are in conjunction. Okay, they're together. So for you, it's that, especially why you have these feelings regarding your children. Like it's almost like, oh, a sense of responsibility. But is it responsibility or is it, as Teal put it, puts it, response ability? How do you respond to it? What are you doing about it? Right? It's that kind of thing. So, you know, be proud of your children, be proud of your accomplishments. Going extremes, it can happen, and you need to allow for that to happen. But then figuring out how do I process that? Not really process it, just lean into it. And how do you don't rise above it right away? Again, you don't don't bypassing anything is not going to help. Mm. Right? No skipping. Um, yeah. So what that means is that. The heart, and I'm still doing a lot of work on some of the asteroids. Um, but Sisyphus is the one who pushed a boulder up the mountain. Do you remember this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. To show off his power. So he violated hospitality. Uh, he angered the gods. He cheated death twice. Um, ah, okay. Let's look into further than that. Let's see. Okay. Um, ah, violation of guest obligations. Something to do with guest houses. If you're talking about physical things, right? It's a lot is that desire to save others, being the hero. That's a lot, right? And lust is lust, <laughs> okay? But lust isn't just lust. Lust is like, I want that. It's desire. Right? right? You have that. It's like I mean in your past life it's probably you um probably had to you probably I don't know. You were a lustful prince. <laughs> you were a horny prince. <laughs> but anyways, uh, balance. Gender equality, something like that. Okay, and Astraea is, oh, I forgot Astraea. So Astraea is that want, the desire for harmony and morality and values, but sometimes forgetting that even what we want, we can't exactly get because it's almost, it's impermanence. We want something to be a certain structure, but we have to let go of that. So with Astraea here being part of, so most like you have to heal your past. Okay, <laughs> obviously we have to heal. It. You have to heal your um, inner desires, mm -hmm. both desires on surface desires and inner desires, with how to be, um, of course. Oh, okay. Also, gender stereotypes, like you know, being the man of the house for you. It's like, Okay. Um, so, uh, bipolarism. Okay, interesting. <laughs> that it's polarity. He also represents polarity. He represents 
this disbelief that it's like it's this way or this way. So that ties in a lot with um, with Asraya because Asraya is like that too. She is very extreme, which is funny because it's in Aries. Aries is the sign that's also it can be stubborn. Aries does not like being told what to do. Okay, so how what that means is that when you heal to so Charicle, Charicle means like not just healing. Healing as in like acceptance. Kind of healing. So when you have to be uh, true to yourself and your inner desires, then you can go forward. Uh, before we move forward, though, you have to also realize that there's these ones. Right here. Antigone is moral values. Simple as straight as that. Moral values like being. Rig it's rigidity also. Clitia <laughs> sounds like clitoris. <laughs> Clitia is um, when we sacrifice so much of ourselves because of something we love, but we don't, we get nothing in return. It's unrequited passion, it's unrequited love. So basically it's just unrecognized. So for you, it's your unrecognized freedom, right? To be yourself, to be of service in your own way, okay? And really sticking with it, but at the same time balancing that with the future, and saying, "Oh, Sisyphus conjunct your North Node." It's um something to do with accommodations, something to do with um. Let's take a look at okay. So Venus, sorry, oops, Venus was. was with Um, something to do with where is your greatest okay I see here your greatest your pain your wounding right this is one of your wounds right it's ruled by Venus as well Taurus is though more grounded it's more earthly so that ties into your basic needs as well Taurus represents also a certain boundary Taurus represents stubbornness, but Taurus also represents the earth, farming. So there's something about your wounding, because the reason why we probably have balance issues is because we're not balancing life. <laughs> right? That's what it is. The reason why we also have this, the ear stuff, is because we don't know how to listen, not just dislisten, but listen. It's not really about the technique. It's not about the meditation. It's about surrendering. And this is now going back into your Pluto. You need to surrender. Die. I'm going to say this as someone who understands this. You need to die before dying. So how that ties into your North Node is sometimes maybe your how you accommodate others, okay, that's Sisyphus, how you accommodate others, how you learn to um, bring forward your gifts and show others your gifts, sticking to your guns, but at the same time saying that, oh, I don't, not saying, um, accepting, but also processing first, that others, everyone's just different. One of the things I know about cancer people is that people don't realize that cancer can be stubborn. <laughs> okay. okay, people think that cancer is like all soft, sometimes all emotion. No, there's a reason why it's called the crab. Because the crab wants security all the time. If it doesn't get it, it's going to be as fucking militant as the U.S. Army. Okay, cancer... <laughs> The United States chart is sun and cancer. Why do you think they have military forces? They have Navy, military, Air Force, uh, Marines. Why? What's with all those crazy things? Why? Protection. 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 Right? For the sake of the, the deluded delusion of family. It's not really family. But again, of course, you know, they're learning through that. So that's, that's their culture. Collectively speaking. 
but for you on an on an individual basis it's working with you see right here i can see right away i just saw it right away you have your there so that means you have challenges with your path you really have like these like i don't know where i'm getting right i would say allow for those challenges because challenges keep us awake without challenges we're just like oh this is comfortable okay i'm secure i got my food okay i have my family i'm safe Cancer doesn't want to hear that too. Cancer doesn't like to hear. What? There's no such thing as security. No, my home, my family. I know it's scary, scary as shit. <clears throat> but I think it just takes, you have to roll with the punches, right? Instead of just going with the flow, roll with the punches, but don't just roll with the punches. Again, that validation first. I think the validation thing is important to you because it's emotions. I'm going to go into the progression chart. Uh, let's see how much you change. I have an idea of now where to go. I'm going to show you. Um, so your son was originally cancer. Right? You see that? Okay, great. But then now you, how you've changed is now you're I would say a lot more technical. You're more technical now than you were before. You're more, you have gone through the emotional ego processing, which is Leo. You're now in, or the desire, rather, not into, the desire for grounding yourself a little bit more with your emotions by also acknowledging them and really like seeing the details behind those experiences. Okay. Like what makes you happy, that kind of stuff. What gives you creativity? What gives you that sense of like, ah, right? This also ties in with you being a father. The son is also rules, it rules fatherhood. Fatherhood, father figures. Typically back then, your relationship with your father was probably very good. Possibly, there's a, there's a, there was a possibility of your relationship with your father being like kind of nurturing, but at the same time, maybe not. Um, because we did, you do have your question, you do question your path, right? So, uh, but now with it's what to do with your life. You kind of familiar now with the emotions. It's almost like you went through this emotional transformation. Now you're kind of balancing that with how do i make this useful how do i teach others about my experiences right um and let's see here you actually um, is that conjunct i can't see it ah okay so you still have, you have Vesta now. I never mentioned Vesta before, but Vesta is, well, not eventually. Your Vesta is the part of us that wants to, that understands our own inner sacredness. It's a part of us that wants to be pure. The part of us that wants to just like, it's almost like, it's a weird, Part of ourselves it's almost like in a way it's what pushes us to be still and quiet and kind of reserve what's important to us it's a part of us that goes like this is important to me and sacred to me and everything else is like secondary um i'm not really going to go deep into much of vesta but how that ties into your current state right now is because before, oh, actually, oh okay now I said whole like um it was opposite of what was it uh it was opposite of this your Venus right here remember I told you earlier you were like you grew up in a family that was like 
mm. all about talking and just information and learning a lot of stuff. But there was no emotional connection. And so that in turn was, it's almost like you didn't know how to be real with your own direction, your career. You didn't know how to, your Neptune was in the 10th house retrograde you didn't know how to what was real what is what's, what's what am i supposed to do it's my vocation what career am i supposed to be, be heading towards this is why you said like when you were in university you just dropped it right you said that right yeah so but here we have the 10th house you have neptune here connections right? divinity and higher purpose you're you're embracing that now. That's part of that's kind of that's becoming part of your path, your career itself. Mm. It's almost like you were kind of dependent at the same time, independent from relationships, at, but you didn't know what was real, right? Sorry, oops. You didn't know what was real because it was in retrograde. So relationships it affected your career path. It's almost like, in a way, there's a part of you that goes like, if I get into this relationship, that'll be my career. That'll be my path. That'll be where I'm headed. Does that resonate with you? The idea is, um, once we open up Hamea in ourselves, we understand our ability to be, what do you call this? I don't want to say fertile. <laughs> That's not the right word for it, but... It's kind of like our inner mother nature. It's like we understand our ability to, oh, it's a different part of our personality. Uh, I'm still getting to know these, like, it's very deep. These planets way out there, they're quite, quite deep. Um, I'm still trying to grasp some of what they do. Um, but that's the general gist of it. It's like you're, it's like, it's a, you know, it means like relationships were basically important to you it helps you kind of give you that energy right um but with vesta here it's kind of like looking at and you don't how to right it's like that water bottle thing was saying well the first analogy did not work but now it's going to work imagine you're drinking water right so you need to find yourself in that you, know, you need to replenish yourself first it's still in leo so creativity is kind of still kind of blocked in to, to, to some to some respect, but downloads. She's the one that is about um, this actual dwarf planet, not an asteroid. He's a dwarf planet that represents uh, manifestation because it's about belief. It's belief and communication. So, with but with standing now, it's like, oh, okay, now I understand the limitation, right? But there's still kind of sometimes there's a bit of fear in it because a part of you wants to be free. It's tied to women as well. So there's a part of you that wants to just be carefree. But with, so, you know, it's funny because it's now closer to, to it's closer to Pluto. So now your journey is actually towards uh, I don't want to say this to scare you, but um, it's towards real transformation. Real transformation. Learning to be powerless when you need to, so that you can discover your true power. That's Pluto. So, with it conjunct your North Node, it also means, and Libra as well, it also means that you're starting to understand the value of relationships and balance and harmonizing with that. That kind of makes sense? <laughs> well, I can't hear you. Did you say something? Hold on a second. Can you hear me? One second. Let me change something. Hello? No. 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 Can you hear me? Oh, but the sound got muted. Okay. That's fine. 
Um, oh, there you go. I can hear you. I can hear you. There you go. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so okay. We got quiet. Okay. Um, you're Pisces. You're going through a lot of emotional heightened state. Right? Um, probably a desire to really absolve a lot of things in your life. Right? To absolve it, like to dissolve, absolve, it's kind of similar. Yeah. And really kind of let go. And then you want to, you eventually go out your emotions. Um, I'm not sure when that will be, but I would say it's quite soon. <laughs> yeah. So, I can't hear you, what? So that's as far as it went. Um, as I already showed you at the beginning, the cards that I pulled up earlier were those cards. So we can always go through those things. Um, still residual feelings of like disappointment. <laughs> but you know, you go through that stuff and this is part of the whole process. Expect the unexpected. I don't know. Something with my fingers. It was maybe subconsciously wanting to delete that second part. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like probably it is, I don't know, there's something there, but anyways, you'll get over it, but yeah, we will get over it. But thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful, insightful, or at least I have no idea anymore. I, for me, it was just fun, and I hope you guys have fun with that too. It's a long ass video, but you know, that's part of the whole thing, this is astrology. It's not, you know medicine <laughs> anyways see you guys later thanks for watching